Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will give you an introduction to Compose Multi-Platform for web. So you will learn to really build your first website and web application using Compose and shared code in a Kotlin multi-platform project. In case you don't know me, I'm Philip and doing nothing else since 2019 than developing Kotlin software. So if you want to improve at Kotlin, subscribe. And in order to start, you need to open Android Studio as our preferred IDE here for Kotlin multi-platform development and create a new Kotlin multi-platform project. In case this is something you are not aware of about how that works, go to File, New, New Project, and then here under Generic, you can create this Kotlin multi-platform template. For that, you do need the Android Studio Kotlin multi-platform plugin in order to get this template. If you maybe develop on Windows or something that is not Mac OS, you won't be able to install this plugin. In that case, you would need to go to kmp.jetbrains.com, I think in order to generate this initial project template. So then you will get something very similar that I will show you here by clicking on next. We give our application some kind of name, CMP web or so, clicking on next. And here, this is the important part, Kotlin multi-platform project. That is the technology that allows us to share Kotlin code between all these listed platforms here, Android, iOS, desktop, web, technically server as well. And in this video, we will focus on web I will still leave these boxes here checked for Android, iOS, and desktop because typically, or very often at least, you also have these other platforms in your Kotlin multi-platform project. And even if we just talk about the web part here, it makes sense to also see how it would integrate in a Kotlin multi-platform project that, in, that extends this to the other technologies and platforms here. The only boxes that we want to untick here is server and include tests, but you also want to make sure that sheer UI here is actually set to sheer UI for both iOS and web. And if you then click finish, after that, it will look just like here. Make sure you are here on the project view by clicking on this little uh, drop down arrow and going to project. You don't want to be on Android, which I think is the default. And after having created this project, if we take a look in this Compose app module, then we see all those different so called source sets. So, sets of source code, after all, where the source code can be written for specific platforms or for multiple platforms as a whole. For example, common main is the source set where we put in all the code that we want to share between all these platforms. That's the whole point of Kotlin Multiplatform. And if you're now new to Compose Multiplatform for web, then three more source sets will be new to you. Specifically, JS main, Wasm JS main, and web main. And before we actually want to write our first line of Kotlin code here for our web application, it's very important to understand these three different sources for web development. Starting with JS main, JS standing for JavaScript. This is really, uh, let's call it the traditional Kotlin JS source set. So Kotlin has an implementation to be able to take Kotlin code and translate that to JavaScript code directly. And as you maybe know, the entire web is based on JavaScript. JavaScript code that our Kotlin code gets translated into will run directly in the browser in the so-called JS runtime. So that is just a runtime that will keep on running with your JavaScript code that takes your JavaScript code, interprets it, executes it while you do something on a web page. And this is what a lot of the web is actually based on. This JavaScript runtime is very dynamic. So on the one hand, you're very flexible with that, also in the amount of libraries you can use. But on the other hand, being flexible typically also means a certain amount of overhead. So it's not the most efficient way to write web applications. And since the runtime is also something that would have to be included in some kind of bundle you generate here for your web page, that will also increase the bundle size. And that is why JetBrains is nowadays actually pushing this Wasm JS main here a lot. Wasm standing for Web Assembly which means that the Kotlin code that we put in here, you can see there is a default platform class here where we have some Kotlin code that is pre-generated for this project template. This Kotlin code here, when really running our application here for WebAssembly, won't get translated to JavaScript code directly, but to so-called WebAssembly bytecode. And all this is really something you don't have to understand in depth here at this point, but it's important to understand these differences between JavaScript and WebAssembly. WebAssembly in the end is just about more low level instructions that modern browsers can execute. And this in the end solves quite some problems that we had with JavaScript, because on the one hand, we get a better performance for CPU intensive operations. We get a smaller bundle size since the JavaScript runtime doesn't need to be included and bundled with that. It also allows us interoperability with JavaScript. So this means we can actually use JavaScript libraries here in our Kotlin multi-platform project. And also the other way around, we can use Kotlin multi-platform libraries that we generate here in a JavaScript project. So this is fully interoperable. However, the WebAssembly source is a little bit less interoperable and a little, little bit more limited in that regard than normal JS main. And is also more of a new thing 
at least comparing it with JavaScript, with a normal JS main source set. So if you really need to support older browsers as well, then WebAssembly at this point may not be the right pick for you yet. However, by default, you get both these source sets. So you can say, hey, I want to write certain code in JavaScript main. Then you can put it in here. And if you want to write certain code in a WebAssembly JS main, then you can put it in here. But in the end, both of these ways will give you a working website. But you will also notice that there is a third web-specific source set, which is WebMain. And WebMain is in the end the most simple one to understand since it just bundles JS main and Wasm JS main, because there is of course quite a significant shared part that is just for web that you could write for both JS and Wasm JS main. So while in common main, we could put code that we want to share among all these sources here across our entire application, web main would be where we put code that we want to share between Wasm JS main and JS main. So just on the web part. In most cases, when really building a composed multi-platform application here, you can mostly ignore these JS and WasmJS main sources unless you really have to explicitly write code that just works on WebAssembly or just works in the normal JavaScript main. Then you would put these in here. But ideally, you want to, of course, share as much code as possible in a Kotlin multi-platform project. So if you have web-specific stuff, you could put this in web main directly or even in common main, which is the whole point of Compose multi-platform, which lets us here really build UIs where we share the exact logo of the UI among all these different platforms. So Android, iOS, web, technically desktop, that would be what JVM main is for. So here in main KT, that is the entry point of our web page, the first function that gets executed the moment your web page is opened. If we open this, then you can see all that is really in here is a Compose viewport, which is just a web specific thing, bundles our app Composable. And this comes from common main. So if we command click into that, this is what the initial project template has generated here. And if you now want to inspect how this would look like on in your browser, then you could simply go to this Compose app here, click on wasm.js, for example, or JS. So you can now choose whether you want to run this with your JavaScript runtime or with WebAssembly. Let's choose WebAssembly here, since that is definitely what JetBrains is pushing. And if we now run this, then you can notice that our web page will open the moment our project has been built. Here's a button. So all that is based on Material UI, Material 3 UI at this point. But you can, of course, also build fully custom UI and compose multi-platform. And if we click this, then we see our typical initial animation here. Hello, web with Kotlin WebAssembly. And this is now a working website, as you can see, with a cool little animation, which is now running locally here on localhost. But let's actually build our own little application here. Since I, of course, want to show you how you can write your own compose code that will really lead to something a little bit functional on your web page. So let's get rid of all that inside this material theme block and instead build a little increment counter and decrement counter. So we just have a big text that displays a number. We have one button to increment that number and another number to decrement it. That could work by first of all declaring this counter state. So the current number that we are actually displaying and in Compose, that works by declaring a state. For example, immutable int state of, because we have a number here, integer, that is initially zero. And here it's really important to understand that we write this code currently in common main. So here, if we take a look in common main, this is where this appkt file is located in. This is now not web specific code. This is code that we write once here in common main and that we could not only use it to display this on our web page, but also on iOS, Android, desktop, on all these other client platforms. Write once, run everywhere. And that is super cool. So let's have maybe something like a column that will allow us to center our counter and arrange it in a column wise fashion. So in a vertical one, we can say, we give it a modifier that we fill the entire screen. So modifier fill max size. And we say horizontal alignment to center it horizontally is equal to alignment center horizontally. Same thing for the vertical arrangement to center it vertically as well in the center of our page by saying arrangement dot center. So everything we now put in here inside of this column will be properly centered both horizontally and vertically on our web page. This means we can put our big text here that displays our counter where the text is simply our counter dot to string, since the text works as a string, our counter is an integer, we need to convert this to a string. We can also increase the font size a little bit. So we say font size is maybe, let's say 40 SP. So that's the text unit that Compose Multi-Platform works with. And then below this text, we want to just have two buttons next to each other. One of them will be for decrementing the number and one of them for incrementing. Since these should be put uh, in, a, in a horizontal fashion, we want to put them in a row. That is how, how that works in Compose by simply saying we have one button that gives us the event when we clicked on it, where we can then increment the counter or decrement it 
And we have some content for this button. So what we really want to have on the button itself, that will simply be a text that displays a minus in this case to decrement the number. And we can copy paste that here to also have an increment button next to that. So these two buttons will now be arranged in a row like fashion since we've nested that inside of a row. If we click this decrement button here in this on click, that is the lambda that will be invoked. We in the end just want to say counter minus minus. In the increment button, we say counter plus plus. And if we now actually run this again, so stop this, run this, and then wait for this page to show up in our browser, then there we go. And here is our increment button. So now this is how it used to look like. We have now changed this to look like this. And if we click this button, then our number increments. So we can click this a few times, we can decrement it again, technically also to a negative number, but this is fully shared UI. If we would run the iOS app, it would also look just like that. If we would run the desktop app, it would also look just like that. And that is the main advantage of Compose Multiplatform, since it allows you to share this UI that you build once across all these different platforms. But I'm not yet done with the video. I still want to share a bit about limitations of Compose Multiplatform for web. And I also want to show you something very unique and cool that Kotlin Multiplatform, specifically on the website, allows us. So let's start with that. What I want to do is, in Android Studio, Let's close this again and uh, stop the execution. I want to go to this app composable here that is currently put in our shared code. And I want to have the option or I want to get the information about the counter when it changes also in our web part of the code base, because we want to do something web specific now. Since so far, we really just dealt with shared composed multi-platform code where there isn't really any difference between these platforms. But if we now say we have a Lambda here on counter change, for example, where we get the new integer count of this counter when it changes. We can also default initialize that so the other platforms don't complain if we don't reference this and assign it. If we now trigger this whenever our counter changes, so here, after having decremented our counter, we can say on counter change with a new counter value, and the same thing when we've incremented, uh, incremented that counter. That means if we now go to web main, our entry point for our website, where we call this app composable that can now take in this lambda, we can assign this by saying on counter change, we get this counter here, but the difference is now that here we are on the web part of our source code in web main. And that means we also get access to web specific functionality. And this means we could technically execute real raw JavaScript code here inside Compose and Kotlin Multiplatform. And that simply works by maybe going in here and saying, okay, if the counter is actually 10, let's, let's show a little browser alert. So a little pop-up that says, hey, your counter is 10 or you've cracked it or whatever. We could do this by simply calling this JS function. And this is something that's really only applicable here in the web part, obviously, because on Android, JavaScript is not a thing or on iOS. So here, if we are in app, then here we can definitely not execute this JS function since we are in the common part. And therefore we can only use functionality that is available in the common part. But here on the web part, we can do this. And we can really just paste our raw JavaScript code that we need to put in um, curly braces. And then in here, we could simply call, for example, the JavaScript alert function. We need to escape the quotes here since we are in a string already. And then we can say, you've cracked it, for example, and finishing this off with another escaped quote. And of course, a closing parentheses. So this is now a function that is normally available in JavaScript that we can execute directly in Kotlin. And technically, you of course wouldn't have to <laughs> write and hard code the, this JavaScript code here. You could, of course, just as well include a JavaScript file in your project hierarchy and then load this or read it in here as a normal resource and execute it that way. Uh, this would, of course, be a little bit less messy. You will notice that it gives us a warning here that um, on the one hand, we need to opt into the, this is, uh, experimental Wasm JS <laughs> interrupt. So Wasm at this point in Compose Multiplatform is still in beta. So you need to alt enter here and then opt into that. So there's still a little bit of experimental function calls here that may be changed in future, but doing it like this will also not work. It will actually complain because it wants these JavaScript executions to be in a separate function as the only statement. Um, so in the end, what we need to do is have a private function, call it maybe alert, pass in our text that we want to display, and then we can cut out this JS call, move it in here, and then maybe say, okay, instead of you've cracked it, we put in our text here inside of these quotes. And then here we can call our alert function with cracked it. And if we now run that again, and we take a look in our browser, once that has been built, um, 
an argument for the JS function must be a constant string. Or say, okay, apparently we can't have arguments. Then let's, let's just hard code that here and say, you've cracked it just like we had it before. And then just call the alert function like that. Okay, that's something I didn't know. And there we go. Our web page is opening again. And if we now increment the number to 10, let's see what happens. We do this, 9, 10. And we get this alert, the, the typical browser-like alert that you maybe know from other web pages. Also, when you are about to maybe leave a page with unsafe changes or so. And this is now actually JavaScript code that we've executed from our Kotlin site. And the same way, as I mentioned, you could also go inside of a JavaScript project and execute your Kotlin code from Kotlin multi-platform. So these technologies are really fully interoperable. And this will now show whenever we actually reach a count of 10. Lastly, something that is really worth mentioning here, which is quite a limitation of Compose multi-platform for web, and that is that we have to understand how this actually works. Because under the hood, Compose multi-platform really just draws stuff, draws its UI on a plain canvas. So what we see here are really just pixels for the browser. It's not really structured content. Only Compose knows the structure of our content, but in the browser, the structure is lost. And we can also inspect this by hitting a Command Shift C here in Google Chrome, and then that will open our developer tools. Because if we now take a look here in our in our body shadow root, then we will see that there is a canvas, and this is really, regardless of how big your Compose UI will be, you will only end up with a single canvas here in your web page. So all these pixels from the Compose UI will just be drawn on this plain canvas. If you open the developer tools from another web page, you will typically see a much bigger HTML hierarchy and structure here, where every single text is, for example, wrapped inside of a P tag for paragraphs or headline H1, H2, and so on. So that is quite a downside of Compose multi-platform. You may ask why, because you still get this web page here that looks as you want. But one big downside here is that this won't be able to be inspected that well by uh, crawlers. So if you really publish a web page here, that these typical search engine crawlers often visit your web page in order to scan it, in order to know how to index it so that other people also find it in search. And for that, they have to know what kind of text is on your website. But if your website is not in a structured format where there are clear text tags that these crawlers can scan and parse, then they won't be able to find a lot and therefore won't really know what your website is about. There are ways to maybe work around that a little bit to at least give them something, but it won't get to the same quality as really having a structured website. So you actually have two options here with Compose Multiplatform. On the one hand, you just accept that and you maybe say search engine optimization is not so critical for you because you get the visitors on your website in different ways via social media or whatever. Or you say you actually don't share the code between your entire application, the entire UI code by putting this here in common main, but you say you write your web UI specifically in one of these web source sets. Because Kotlin still technically allows you to build your web page in a structured way that will also then be represented in your web page exactly like that. So you can really use diffs, you can use paragraph tags, headlines, just like that and nest them in your Compose code or in your Kotlin code here. And then that will also look like that. But the moment you do this, you won't be able to share this UI with other platforms like Android, iOS, and desktop. So that is a trade-off you have to think about here. Whether you want to be able to put all your code here in your common part of the code base and also be able to share it between all platforms, but it being drawn on a canvas, or whether you say, hey, I actually want to, yeah, let's call it building the UI natively for web to really also be able to work with this typical browser-like hierarchy and really build a real HTML hierarchy that can also be perfectly parsed by crawlers. Just some food for thought. I hope you enjoyed this video and you not only learned to build a little inquiry encounter, but also about the, the backgrounds of this technology, which is really what is quite important to understand before you dive into a bigger project because such small little decisions and misunderstandings can often lead to quite big problems later. If developing with Kotlin for the entire software stack, so Android, iOS, desktop, backend is really something you would like to get deeper into, then I actually have a Kotlin full stack developer bundle that I will link here in this video's description. Check it out, 56 hour course bundle in which we really build a fully fledged chat application in Kotlin and Compose multi-platform with a Kotlin backend as well. Super, super in-depth, all on an industry scale level. Check it out. And other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.